to show. So, yeah. so uh, just to brief up, uh, the osteochondroma as such uh, is very common lesion. It's a benign bony lesion. It can it usually develops around the metaphyseal region, and uh, it's seen in a grow, growing skeleton. Um, um, they do have a relation close to the periosteum, and they usually appear around the growth plate in the long bones. So that's why it's usually seen in the growing population as such. The growth of this tumor usually stops once the physical plate closes. And uh, there are some instances where they have seen paraarticular or extra osseous osteochondroma. They usually arise from the joint capsule and uh, or uh, pa uh, paraarticular uh, soft tissue without any bony attachment. These are very rare and especially still rare in, in older individuals. So... Um, There you go. So um, I'm presenting to you a case of a 50-year-old lady who noticed a painless swelling in her left knee joint. Um, she had a small swelling, maybe uh, a size of about two centimeters into one centimeter. That's how she described. Uh, she mainly said uh, a small as a pea, the size of a pea, and about five years back. So she must have been 45 years when she developed this and uh, it increased in size over the last five years. That was her main concern. She was worried that uh, as, as uh, friends or relatives said that this can be uh, not that good and uh, it's increasing in size and it's very rampant for over the last few years. Um, so better you get some consideration in regards to this. So she did come to us and then on examination, it was a solitary swelling. It was not tender at all and it was hard in consistency, so, so it was bowling, bony swelling, well-defined margins, and uh, lobulated surface, measuring about six into five centimeters as such. Um, it was mainly in the infrapartillary region, and it was displacing the patellar tendon laterally. So it was non-tender, um, and uh, bony hard in consi uh, consistency. The plane was below the patellar tendon and it was uh, not attached to any bones as such. And movement aspect, it was uh, possible, uh, apart from the patella in medial, uh, the patella was able to be moved in the medial lateral portion and um, it was uh, appeared to be more prominent in during flexion. There was no deficits as uh, neurolog neurological or vascular as such. And the range of movement of the uh, lady was zero to 110 and uh, terminal flexion was little uh, painful and uh, was restricted. So she being a housemaid, she needed to bend a knee uh, to, for her purpose, for a work related purpose. And uh, that was hampering her. And second thing is a recent uh, increase in size was a main concern for her. So that was uh, bothering. So that she, uh, she did come to us for that. Now coming to the radiology aspect as such, it was well circumcised uh, mass. Uh, and it was mineralized mass. There was no abnormal calcification that we have noted in this. And uh, it was within the adjacent tissue uh, and nothing in the adjacent tissues as such. And it is well, well below the patella of the left knee joint. And uh, MRI based, uh, it was confirmed to be uh, benign in nature. You had the T2 as well, T1 uh, images here. And there was any uh, attachment to the nearby bony structures as such. Okay, so um, so this is the clinical uh, the the surgery that she underwent. So if we uh, diagnosed her to have an exosis osteochondroma, and then we did a surgical decision, total surgical decision as we planned, and the size of this uh, mass was about five five-ish to six centimeters in uh, length, and uh, interoperably the swelling was found in the fast pad, and uh, with minimal or almost nil attachment. Um, there was uh, no bony attachment as such. The sp uh, swelling was hard uh, and uh, we split it into two and sent it to the, uh, the histopathologist. Right? This is the image uh, post-surgical uh, excision. Whereas if you see the whole image was um, and this region, a very big mass over there on the anterior aspect. And then um, after the excision, following excision, it's quite clean and free over here. And that's the x-ray. 
Okay, so histopathology it was confirmed to be extraosseous, and uh, there was no malignancy uh, noted over here. And uh, so after one year of follow up, uh, following the surgery, the patient was asymptomatic. She did come and visit us, and without any signs of recurrence. And then later on, she was lost for follow up visit. Uh, so discussion aspect: um, this extraosseous osteochondroma, though usually uh, osteochondroma occurs at the growing age skeletal. Um, this is seen in a 50-year-old lady and she was quite dormant for the last uh, so many years and there's uh, increase in size for the last five years. That was the uh, most uh, triggering aspect of this case and uh, it's quite rare lesion and uh, um, it occurs, uh, it's arising from the soft tissue surrounding of the joint capsule because uh, it's being exosseous osteochondron and such. Um, I did uh, check on certain uh, journals and uh, I found uh, one such uh, from the Washington University in 2010 where they mentioned 25 year old lady with two years of history of right knee mass and occasional pain in the night. Report a paraarticular osteochondroma histologically, just like our case, but our case being a 50 year old lady. And there was another case of a Japanese paper in Feb 2020. It was stating a 56 year old woman two years history of knee joint pain, and they did a needle biopsy and uh, histologic analysis showed it for synovial osteochondroma. There was another case from the Bra Brazilian paper. Uh, it was the intraarticular lesion, again from the Hofa spat. This being still older lady, that was 78 years old lady, and progressive knee joint pain, as if well it's severe arthrosis as I show. So you had uh, osteoarthritis along with this. Clinically and uh, radiologic, it was diagnosed to be paraarticular osteochondroma. Um, and histologically, it was shown as uh, synovial osteochondroma, so, uh, synovial chondromatosis. So this patient underwent the, uh, total knee replacement and also excision of this uh, mass. So um, to conclude, um, a holistic approach in uh, incorporating the clinical, uh, radiological, and pathological criteria should be undertaken to establish the nature of extraosseous cartilaginous tumors that are present in unusual anatomic sites. Uh, surgical excision in total is a management of choice once the diagnosis is confirmed, as well as once it's been excised. Um, histopathology is uh, uh, a must to reaffirm the diagnosis.